today's lesson, we will be dealing with conjunctive adverb. Now, what is a conjunctive adverb? When we say conjunctive adverb, it joins two main clauses or two independent clauses. Again, let's recall, an independent clause has a subject and a verb and expresses a complete thought. Typically, adverbs modify other words such as verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. Conjunctive adverbs, however, are used to modify two independent clauses and join them together, behaving more like coordinating conjunctions. They use the second clause to modify or describe the first clause like an adverb. And to connect two clauses, we need to use semicolon. So later on, you'll know how to use that in connecting two clauses. Conjunctive adverbs are important to make the reading easier to read. Using this, we will be able to know the relationship between sentences and parts of sentences. So that's how important conjunctive adverbs are. Now, I have here provided some examples of conjunctive adverbs. So we have after all, also, as a result, besides, consequently, finally, for example, furthermore, hence, however, in addition, incidentally, indeed, in fact, in other words, instead, likewise, meanwhile, Moreover, nevertheless, next, nonetheless, on the contrary, on the other hand, otherwise, still, then, therefore, thus, and yet. As you can notice, conjunctive adverbs are the same with transitional devices. If two sentences or paragraphs are linked, they are called transitions. Otherwise, they are called conjunctive adverbs. Here's the pattern you can follow in using conjunctive adverb. Note the use of the semicolon and the comma to separate the words in sentences. So we have the pattern main clause or the independent clause followed by a semicolon, then the conjunctive adverb followed by a comma, and then another main clause or independent clause. To fully understand that, let's take a look in our example. Our march to freedom is irreversible. Therefore, we must not allow fear to stand in our way. As you can see here, we have our first main as you can see here, we have our first main clause or independent clause which is our march to freedom is irreversible. Why is it our independent clause? It is because we have the subject march and the verb is and it expresses a complete thought. Note as well that after this, it was followed by a semicolon, then the conjunctive adverb which is the word therefore, followed by a comma, and after this is another main clause or independent clause, which is, we must not allow fear to stand in our way. Here, we also have the subject we and the verb allow, and has a complete idea, thus making it an independent clause. Take note as well that after the comma in the conjunctive adverb, the first letter of the word you'll write next to it should be written in a small letter. Here, the second clause modify or describe the first clause like an adverb. If you are asked why we must not allow fear to stand in our way, it is because our march to freedom is irreversible. Let's have another example. That car was too slow for me. Besides, it was too expensive. So as you can see, it follows here the pattern when using the conjunctive adverb. Now, how would you know when to use conjunctive adverbs? What are their functions? Conjunctive adverbs are also grouped according to their specific function. 
If you want to add a thought or ideas, you may use these conjunctive adverbs. Additionally, also, besides, furthermore, in addition, moreover, etc. Let's take a look in our examples. You are grounded for three weeks. Furthermore, you cannot text anyone on your phone. As you can see here, the conjunctive adverb furthermore expresses an additional thought because aside from this person is grounded for three weeks, this person can also text anyone on his phone. Another example, I love that writer's status novel. Moreover, her book of poetry is beautifully written. So the conjunctive adverb, which is the word moreover, also adds an idea. The speaker said that he or she loved the writer's latest novel. Aside from this, he or she also commented that the book of poetry is beautifully written. So this expresses an addition of idea. Next, if you want to show two opposing ideas or contradiction, you may use this conjunctive adverb such as however, instead, nevertheless, regardless, still, on the contrary, on the other hand, etc. Example, I wanted to see a fantasy movie. However, my friend wanted to see an action movie. Here, the conjunctive adverb however establishes contradiction because it mentions here that the person want to see a fantasy movie, but the other person, who is his friend, wants to see an action movie. So there is an opposing idea. They don't have the same preference. Another example. We had planned on going out to dinner. Instead, we cooked dinner at home. The conjunctive adverb instead shows contradictions as well. If you look upon the sentence, they plan to eat dinner outside, but what happens is that they cook dinner at home, so it contradicts. Next, if you want to clarify a point or explain more about the topic, you may use the following conjunctive adverbs. We have, for example, for instance, namely, that is, etc. Let's have sample sentences. Many students will join in the different contest. For example, poster making contest. As you can see here, the conjunctive adverb, for example, clarifies or explains the first main clause or independent clause, which is students will join the different contest. And what kind of contest? Poster making contest. So it clarifies something. Another example Mark is a gifted man. For instance, he invented a cure for COVID-19. Here, it also clarifies something and explains why Mark is a gifted man through the use of the conjunctive adverb, for instance. And if you want to state a cause and effect statement, the reasons why it happened and the result of something, you may use accordingly, consequently, hence, then, therefore, thus, etc. Example, grade 11 students did study for the test. Hence, they passed. Since we have the conjunctive adverb, hence, it indicates the reason or cause why the grade 11 students passed is because they studied the lessons which resulted into a positive result. Another example, the thunder and lightning were intense. Consequently, the crowd dispersed. Here, we have the cause why the crowd dispersed or moved in different directions, which is the thunder and lightning were intense, and the result is the crowd dispersed. And the conjunctive adverb should be used when you want to emphasize a point or again, certainly, indeed, moreover, of course, etc. Let's have some Paul sentences. She rarely smiles. Indeed, I have seen her smile only once or twice since I came. As you can see here, it only emphasizes that this person, he or she, is talking about really smiles freely, 
For it is mentioned here that he or she saw this person smile only once or twice. Another example, our kids really need a new traffic signal on the corner. Again, it keeps the children safe. Here, it also emphasizes a point which is the necessity to have a traffic signal. Next, if you want to express a time, you may use this conjunctive adverbs. Beforehand, meanwhile, lately, now, since, etc. Example, the new policy is much better. Beforehand, everyone had to enter their own forms. Since we have the conjunctive adverb which is beforehand, this indicates the time, and here it indicates the time before wherein they had to enter their own forms, but no longer the day because of the policy. Another example, Sir Harold climbs the tower to rescue the princess. Meanwhile, the dragon lurks nearby. Same with the first example, it also shows time. So that's the end of our discussion for today. I hope you learned something. Thank you.